Hello everyone and welcome back to the mystical land of War of the Rings Online as we come back after almost a year long hiatus with another War Leader PvMP video. And before we go any further, I want to say happy Boxing Day to everyone. Yes, it is the December the 26th. Um, pretty much this whole year went by with, I don't know, three videos made for the War Leader. But it's alright because I was making videos about other stuff and sometimes things happen. Anyway, let's go ahead, and before we jump in, I'm going to go ahead and re-break down all this stuff, because we've had uh, level cap increases since the last time I made a video, uh, we had new updates, uh, there's just been a lot of content that has gone by, uh, we've even got a whole new class for Lotro now, the Bornings, just a lot of stuff, but uh, my build has pretty much not changed, and I was actually talking to a fan of the, the videos, who actually plays War Leader now because of them, and, you know, hashing back and forth a little bit about some of the choices. And with the corruptions, really, he likes to slot the mitigations. And part of it's just experience, part of it's just number stuff. But for my own personal experience with it, I've never found that I get really great value out of slotting in mitigations. But then there, there's other stuff about the War Leader in particular that make it not very desirable to slot them in the first place. Uh, the big thing is, one, the War Leader starts off with decently high mitigations already, best in all, on the monster play classes, and then on top of that, you've got access to a whole bunch of ways to buff them up uh, outside of using any of your corruption slots. You can use <laughs> the uh, the potions of defense stuff, uh, increase your armor rating, you've got armor of protection, added armor rating, you've got the point defense banner, that thing does a whole ton, uh, you could throw down the banner of terror, you know, sap more of their damage off, you just got a lot of options out there to blunt the edge of their attack, and so it doesn't really become necessary. And then of course, ultimately I feel that you get your best bang for your buck with the war leader as long as you're investing very, very heavily into offense, because offense improves healing and damage and you get your you're more valuable to the group if you've got bigger beefier heal, heals available um, if you're more likely to crit your heals because then they're incredibly beefy we're gonna go with that word for it right now and then of course uh, better crit rating means more access to power of fear for instant heals healing on the run all that goodness uh, better shield bash ratios go stun you know 17 of them, if you can get a string that long. Just good, good things. And, uh, yeah, that's just my own take on it. Anyway, I think that that covers everything that we need to go over for right now. So let's get on with the fighting. So, uh, yeah, I was listening to music on um, first time back in the game after seven months. Get jumped by this burglar, and, uh, first thing to note is he's not wearing any armor at all, which... Uh, confirms the stuff that I ended up talking in chat about, but uh, basically, it feels like Lord of the Rings Online has gone back to Rise of Isengard, um, or possibly Riders of Rohan. The freeps are so powerful right now, they legitimately feel, with this burglar, that he could run around with no armor on and actually kill someone. Unfortunately, someone was me. Yeah, 4k crit. Uh, you're just not gonna do so good against that. Now, he does pop out of stealth in a second here. There he is. Unfortunately, I press the button. I do end up killing him off pretty easily. So next, we've got a couple of Fight Club videos. Uh, Acanthios over there in the chat window. He is the one I was talking to. And I saw him fight multiple targets. Do pretty good at it. Uh, so I'm going after this Guardian here. I'm not really worried about any additional buffs right now. I mean, this is my... It's not my first fight back, because though I did have some small group engagements and stuff like that, but it's still like the th second proper 1v1 that I've gotten into since r starting to play the game after seven months of not playing it. And the few times I was on before then, like two months um, right after Helm's Deep and waiting for the, the Freeps to you know, finally get their courage back and be willing to die again. 
I, I would log on, I would come out, there would just be nothing going on. So really, it's more like 9 or 10 months since I've actually had proper 1v1 fights. Thankfully, the class doesn't really change that much. Uh, once you know how to play your war leader, you just know how to play your war leader. And all the usual stuff. Apply the banners plenty and often. Uh, smart movement. Make use of that power of fear. Go ahead and stun him. Try to back out of there so that he can't go use turn the tables. I think he's already actually popped it, but I'm just going ahead and being cautious because it's a good habit, and I'm able to quickly clean him up. Now, I go ahead and log on to my rank 6 war leader after that, who, bear in mind, he only has the 10% of the lowest level audacity. And I want to see if I can take this Guardian, because I felt like it was a little bit too one-sided with the Ugmog. So, we're trying Gom. See, I, I don't know what he's talking about there. He seems to think that um, I am the greatest war leader he has ever seen. Let's see, what have I been on where I've said words similar to that with dire consequences? Hmm, something about podcast, tank, something, creep tank, I, I don't know. I'm sure there's somebody out there who can think of what I'm referencing. Anyway, on with the fighting. <laughs> now, because this is a free account, uh, I don't have access to half of my corruption slots. I have unlocked uh, all of the class trait slots, and I believe I have access to most of my racial trait slots. I have enough to slot all the racial traits I have. And I haven't bothered to go and buy any advanced skills, anything like that, because I just I just don't feel like I need it. Um, I came up with Ugmog, earning everything uh, through the normal path, and I'm cheap at heart, so I'm willing to suffer through not having something, and then feel much better when I finally do earn it, because then it's got meaning, it's got value to me, it's not just uh, the shortcut that I took. And I, I like how that works out better. Now, I've had to go ahead and move into full-on tank mode, uh, which this is pretty natural. Uh, without having command post or point defense, any of those static banners that stands around and buffs you, uh, you do find yourself just in a lot more trouble. And right now I'm going to end up in a lot of trouble just because he starts getting very lucky with his crits, and he lands multiple stuns and a lot of conjunction stuns, honestly. Uh, See, there I get knocked down there. I believe that was just by him applying charge, but that was a very good timing for him because he stopped my double heal at the worst possible time. I go ahead and wait a little bit. I do get my double heal off anyway, but I, it, the timing of his interruptions, mostly with the stuns, is just starting to wear on me, and I'm getting really low on health. Uh, one good crit could finish it. There I get another conjunction stun, and at this point it's just too much damage, I don't have enough time to get healed up, um, and so a good application of the knockdown plus a couple other stuns that came in the, at a timely moment just managed to win it for him. So in this next fight here, uh, we are going to try to take on this Runekeeper. Now the Runekeeper is currently buffed with Warding Lore and the, uh, the Damage Lore, and the damage buffs are, well, they're back to being a game breaker for the free peoples. Now here he's going ahead and fighting me um, in the standard old school classic lightning runekeeper mode of lightning this of you know run around and press your spam your ceaseless argument and build up for your epic conclusion use some stuns if you got him uh, he misses that one right there I was very happy about that and just try to do your thing now, as you can see, the damage output on him is considerable. Now, I'm currently in full attack mode, but I'm not getting a lot of value out of the uh, RF command, because I'm not standing, staying right on top of him and getting my melee attacks off, which I should be doing. Since I'm not doing that, I should honestly go ahead and switch to RF protection right now, but I'm, I'm also kind of in the middle of trying to attack, and I just don't want to take the time out to try to pull that off. So I'm just trying to stay on him, keep up the pressure, uh, because from what I had recalled, uh, Runekeepers don't have a ton of self-preservation and access to instant morale heals, 
They got one or two, but they're not very big in terms of how much they heal up. So I figure that if I stay on him, keep up the pressure, I'll have him pretty good. I almost had him right there, but then, as you see, he heals up right back to 6k. So their healing has actually increased a lot from the last time that I saw them. So the, the Runekeeper, I'm not really so sure I'm happy with this access to massive on-demand emergency heals for Runekeepers with the damage output that they have right now. Uh, there have been times where I've seen Runekeepers that they definitely could have used that. Uh, see there, he went from 3 to 10k. Uh, but 6k heals on the spot like that uh, definitely makes it a serious challenge. And now comes the stun spam. Well, for now, we're still doing pretty good. Uh, but the, the other thing to remember is, uh, you know, I've got, I'm going ahead and I buffed up myself with my defensive potions. So I've got the resistance, I've got the armor rating, I've got all that wonderful stuff. But there still is this glaring lack of no damage buff consumable for monster players. The free peoples have it, and then they've got a, a catch-all, one buff does it for them with their uh, warding lore. But they just get access to the more important part of the equation, which is damage. And right there he manages to pull off a couple really good stuns at the right time and manages to kill me off. So, I wait until... Well, I actually come right back and I say, okay, I'm gonna try this with RF Protection on. Uh, see how this goes. So, start the attack. I uh, probably should have put my banner down beforehand, but eh, whatever. And he decides he's going to go as fire mode, so he's going to be throwing up lots and lots of dots and just trying to burn me down this that way. And this is where things really get crazy, because uh, I've seen a time or two where dot ring keepers were deadly, but never like this. I'm already way below half morale. I'm down to one-third morale, and the fight has been 20 seconds. That is absurd. Now, I've managed to do a fair bit of damage myself, but with the stuns and the, the building up damage, I can't even out-heal the damage output. There's no way to stand up to that. So, because I'm not satisfied, I wait and come after him a third time, and I wait for his buffs to disappear. And this time, I go, okay, he saw what I was doing, he saw the I had the R of protection, I'm going to be R of commands, if he goes for the fire dot, my only chance is to get on him and try to kill him as quickly as possible. If he still had his mastery lore for the extra damage, there's no way that I'd be able to, to stand a chance. But because he doesn't have the, the lores reapplied, I'm doing more damage to him, he's doing less damage to me. It's my one opportunity to actually beat him. I've got both my banners down. I managed to get a decent interrupt right there. Uh, I've got to be careful to keep my healing up, though, as I try to just put damage on it. And remember, he's also got access to those burst heals now, so I've got to really just apply as much pressure as possible. I want to try to get some good interrupts with uh, my interrupting attack. I also want to try to time my stuns if I can for a decent time, but you know, it's just dangerous. Uh, already down to 30,000, backed up to 40,000, that was a good crit heal for myself right there but it's just going to be a little bit too close and this is just a damage output out of control and that's what the free peoples have in large scale right now uh, it, it has just gone back to the past unfortunately it's not enough for him without his buffs I'm able to finish him off and I'm very happy about that alright so next up I will attack a captain Mostly because I just want to get a feel for where all the classes are. Um, the, there's multiple classes available to fight. So I figure, hey, just go through, do the tour, see what they all bring to the table right now. Uh, the recording starts acting up a little bit here. It gives me a lot of lag. But captains, uh, for the most part, they don't really seem to have changed a whole lot. They've got decent access to self-healing abilities. Uh, sustainment. Uh, Definitely power management has become an issue again, and that's something I'm really happy about overall, is that Freeps in general now have power management issues again. So you can actually beat a Freep, uh, depending on their class, if you can outlast them and run them out of power. And 
you can do this even with a champion. I watch. I didn't actually fight the champion, but I did see Ek go ahead and fight a champion. He basically pulled that off. Uh, he killed him a little bit before he ran the guy out of power, but he got the guy down low on power, got him into power management issues, and managed to beat him that way. Uh, now, as with all the freeps at this point, the the captain does possess a lot more damage output potential than he did in the past. Uh, he's actually forced me to switch over into my commander's stance. So I'm trying to heal up. Go ahead, pop the wonderful little double heal. I'm quickly regaining some health. But because of their sustainment abilities, captains do have a couple of options for getting back power, depending on which kind of shield brother they decide to put on that herald if they're using the herald in the first place which actually they can summon a herald and then equip the banner afterwards if they really want to just to min max as much as possible just some of the options that are available to them now but I am able to weather his assault with my aura of command and just keep chipping away at him I'm not doing a good job of getting through his morale pool. So what I'm going to try to do is just prolong this fight, uh, run him out of power, see if I can kill him then, if he's willing to stick around. So we'll just have to settle in and uh, see how things progress. Once again, sorry about the latency issues going on here. They definitely do cause me problems when I'm actually fighting this as well. The fight seems to be at a stalemate at this point, although he is starting to go down, and his power levels, more importantly, are starting to drop almost to uh, half of his power pool. And at this point, he decides to take off and run for it. And I attempt to pursue him for a little while, just try to keep things going. I should be switching over into Brawler stance. There we go. But... Uh, unfortunately, he decides not to try re-engaging. I end up having to chase him all the way back to the red circle before I give him back, before I give up on it. And that's the end of it. Um, fortunately, being in brawler stance, I'm able to actually heal myself all the way back up very rapidly with the on-the-move quit winding and fight. Now, I'm trying to apply the intimidating shout slows when I can just to keep him slowed down to try to put damage on him unfortunately he gets a resist right there so I'm not able to keep up with him but I do do some decent some intelligent things with my movement here stay on the inside lane uh, just to try to catch up with him get in range for another shot at it uh, and, and he gets a second resist but his speed buff is almost worn off now so I've managed to stay within decent range of him for all this time. And if I just stay out of combat for a while, which won't be hard at all, I can quickly turn on Mobilize and just get right on top of him. But I don't even have to do that because he loops around the tree, gives me a second shot at him. Again, no crit, but I'm right on top of him again. And there we go with the crit. Now we can tell that he is traded into the Hands of Healing just because he's able to use Rallying Cry without needing defeat response. And that's something that got changed uh, about a year ago for captains, is that depending on how they decide to trade, they're able to access some of their defeat response cries without needing a defeat response. I believe if they go lead the charge, they have access to their attack skill. Uh, all that wonderful stuff. So next, I try fighting a burglar, one that's actually 
you know, wearing clothes this time. And Eck is talking about how he got one-shotted by a burglar using improved riddle spam and macros. So that has again become a problem, is uh, global cooldown macro stuff with burglars. Much like it was eh, back in Siege of Mirkwood. Everything just comes back around again. It gets a little tiresome, honestly. Now, unfortunately, because of latency issues, I have a devil of a time trying to keep this guy off of my back. And it just gives him so many opportunities to to get attacks on me. And then right here, this spider starts attacking him. Uh, you can see the debuff is popped up on him, and there comes the little spiderling. And being the gentleman that I am, despite looking like a, a heartless, bloodthirsty Uruk, uh, I decide to stop attacking and realize what's going on. Well, once I realize what's going on. And have to call it off right there. Unfortunately, I blew get a grip in that fight right there. So that's, you know, that whole opportunity down the drain, and now I've got grip on cooldown. And yeah, sure, it's, uh, what, a three minute cooldown, it's halfway gone already, but that is going to come back to haunt me in this rematch. So right now, the la latency, once again, uh, he manages to get behind me, get some crits, do all that fun stuff. Uh, he's blown through just a ton of damage. Now, the other thing that I'm doing wrong in these fights is I'm popping my potions, but I'm popping the wrong ones. I'm actually hitting my purple pot, because um, I'm hitting shift 9 instead of shift 8 by accident. And so I'm not getting rid of dirt in the eyes. That is one more thing that <laughs> comes back to haunt me here because it lowers my accuracy it means I'm not getting uh, hits when I need to I'm not getting crits when I need to to be able to get my power of fear off and now I'm in a lot of trouble right here and what do I not have to be able to do something about it I don't have access to grip and right there I had a chance for a double heal and I didn't use quitters which I should have now, there I go ahead and pop the po the stun pot I do get quitters off, and I managed to actually double heal it, so I got quitters and cracked the whip and followed it up with the quit whining of fight. So he's low, but I'm also getting pretty low, and now is when get a grip if I could pop it right now. It would give me a lot of morale, really solidify the entire situation, allow me to start to control the fight, but I'm not able to do that. Mischievous Glee starts healing him. I'm trying to kite around just to get <laughs> quitters Quitter, get a grip off. I managed to get it off, but it's too little too late at this point. Uh, he's managed to stay right on top of me. He's got slows on me, and he drops me right there. Now, I do fight him again, but I don't record that fight because I don't want to deal with the latency, and I'm able to kill him pretty easily without the latency issues. Next up, I do try fighting a Warden. Now, Wardens, uh, their bleeds are still out of control, and even more so now. They're not as bad as that rune keeper that we sh that we showed you earlier, but they're very close to it. The big difference is with the rune keeper, they to do that they become stationary and they're squishy. A warden gives up nothing to be able to spam all these bleeds off. They're just uh, nigh unstoppable with it. And yeah, sure, I'm using my potion. I'm getting rid of the one or two that can be potted, but most of them are unremovable. And so here I am, I'm blowing all these massive cooldowns. He's not spending significant amounts of power to apply these mass tiers of stacking bleeds. Uh, he's out damaging my ability to heal myself. Uh, pretty much everything about the situation is just blatantly wrong. And down I go from 6k to nothing in about two ticks. So that's where we stand so far. Um, I have seen a burning, but I haven't gotten to fight one one-on-one, -on -one, so I really don't know much of anything about the mechanics of the class, other than that they, when they're in human form, they have staffs, it seems. They got a couple abilities. They don't have a power pool. They seem to generate um, their power from being in combat. Similar to uh, World of Warcraft fighters, or warriors, whatever they call them, what the way that they have their, I think it's fervor mechanic or whatever it is, whatever they call it, uh, the rage, where 
where they build it up, they've got like a standard power bar, but then it builds up like that. It's not like uh, Focus on Hunters or Fervor for Champions, where it builds up on a separate meter and then they also have their power meter. They just don't have any power meter whatsoever. Uh, then they're able to shift into bear form. While they're in bear form, they have uh, an on-the-run heal available. So what I did see from the one boarding I witnessed was he would stay in boarding form, and he would throw debuffs and damage over time effects and stuff at a medium distance, pretty much. And then he would swap into bear form to apply his heals, and then swap right back to go for damage. So it seems to be a an, an interesting take on the stance dance, where it's more form dance or something. But uh, as far as how they measure up one-on-one, -on -one, can't really tell you. Uh, hunters... They seem to be about the same as where they were. They've got lots of traps. They're, they've got options in a one versus one now. They can try to kite and do things, but still not the best <laughs> at it. Uh, certainly, they're still jealous of black arrows when it comes to the one versus one arena. And, of course, I did not fight a champion, but I did get to see one second hand. And minstrels, uh, there were a couple available, but I didn't bother to fight them, because really, we just don't have time for a minstrel duel. Uh, that would be an entire video unto itself, as we have shown in the past. So, uh, that's all for this time. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get some fights with a couple of the classes I haven't managed to actually match up with yet. Maybe find a, a warden that plays in a way that's not uh, based off of copious amounts of Gouda and Parmesan, and is willing to fight in a stance other than bleed spam. But I'm not going to count on it. Uh, definitely, I would like to get a lore master fight. So hopefully, we'll get one of those uh, or some small group videos, some some other stuff. But I am back, and that is the important thing. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, good luck and have fun, whatever you're doing out there. And until next time, Ugmog is out.